uh, Szabolcs Polgár from um, Hungary, the Center for Energy Research. Um, and he will uh, talk about low dose hyper radius sensitivity and induced radius resistance. And uh, if these are signs of adaptation against cancer. Yes. Is it shared? Yes, this is each other. This is. No, no, no. This will be there. I don't see the sharing. Ah, because you. Okay, that's why. Huh? Thank you. That one. All right, thank you. So, uh, I would like to talk about uh, low dose hyper radius sensitivity and induced radio resistance. Uh, I'm doing modeling, and but the first question is always that uh, what is actually radio uh, hyper hyper radio sensitivity? So usually, when we give a dose to a uh, cell culture, the, the, if it increases dose, the surviving fashion will decrease. That Kim's also spoke about this, and we can uh, describe it with an exponential with uh, two parameters, R and B two parameter, which correspond to the single and multiple heat events with the dose at uh, linear and the quadratic term. And that's why we call this model the LQ model. But uh, for certain cell cultures, it actually decreases uh, with a much more increased uh, cell death to a certain point, to a local minimum, where the cell survival changes from around half a gray to one gray the if you increase the dose the surviving fraction of the cells will also increase if this first uh, section is called a hyperendosensitivity, sensitivity where the cells die much faster and these local minimum and maximum uh, between these are the induced radio resistance uh, it's much harder to describe, as you can see with the equation, but it's actually just the LQ model, but with the modification of the alpha parameter. So we have three parameters instead of one alpha, we have two alpha, alpha R and alpha S, and also a DC par parameter that uh, describes the transition where the two uh, lobes change from one to another. Oh, yeah. So, uh, yeah. So, uh, our hy hypothesis why this uh, actually occurs is that this hypersensitive region is a consequence of an optimization at the tissue level that want to minimize the total number of mutations by replacing the most damaged cells with division, of course. Uh, in an equa in equation, it means that the cells die if they have a higher mutagenic damage than the average damage of their environment. Plus, they also take into account that uh, division also uh, causes mutations, and we call this the spontaneous mutation. So, if and if these are uh, if the cell damage is higher, then this cell will die. So if we have these cells, uh, we give each cell a damage number according to, to the Poisson distribution because we are irradiating with uh, photons. And we look at the neighbor neighborhood of our selected cell. Then we actually just doing a comparison that I'm saying that in this case, the cell has two damage, the environment has five over eight damage, on average, and we have the, some kind of uh, damage due to the division, which is not uh, an exact number here, but 
basically this is the comparison that the cells made if it's higher than it dies but of course they are not the cells not sitting in a lattice so we ask we again choose a point actually we choose all of them but still we look at the certain neighborhood we look how far they are from ourselves and uh, actually do this kind of comparison again uh, but we have to also take into account that the if, if a cell is farther than the others then the signal that it can give us about its own damage should decrease because of course if it's farther away then there are less signals that reach our selected cell and we do it by giving a normal distribution for all the cells for its this cell signal uh, and it's a normal distribution because uh, we say that this is a liquid and in a liquid the signal actually the, the chemical signals move by Brownian motion so there is actually no clear bond clear boundary but we can uh, estimate how these signal strengths looks this is just an example with uh, sigma squared which is describes the width of the normal distribution this bell curve and we can see how the distance with the distance this signal strength uh, changes so it's not the the stronger the closer you are to the cell because if you go farther and farther away there are more cells than can uh, contribute to this cell signal so if we do this we can get back a simulation about it so we understand the first part we are saying that okay uh, the cells die more rapidly because if they get damage then they die so the other undamaged cells can divide there but what happens there how is it possible that if I increase the dose, the surviving cells actually also increase? So I made just a really simplified example for this. So saying that, okay, I give numbers to the cells and saying that if a cell has one damage, then it dies and it works for the first part. And I'm saying that now in this simplified example, that if a cell sees another cell who has the same damage than him, then it won't die because, oh, they have the same damage, why should they? So actually, if I increase the number of the damaged cells, uh, small clusters will form where the cells don't, no, no longer die, these yellow ones. So the actual dead cells are decreasing. And the, of course, after, uh, with, with more damage, the, the Poisson distribution gives a higher damage numbers to, to, to cells, which starts to uh, decrease the surviving fraction of the cells again. So, for the high dose region, we use the LQ model with its two alpha and beta parameters because we are only focusing in this uh, small dose effect. And we use two new parameters, the mu parameter, which is the mutation induction rate, that it says that one gray of those, uh, how, how many mutation occurs for one gray of those. And it can be calculated from the initial slope of the experimental data. And we have this spontaneous mutation rate that I already spoke about, and it's it describes how much mutation occurs uh, because of one uh, division. And it can be calculated from the local minimum, the position of the local minimum. So if we take these parameters into account, then we can fit our model to it, but we do it by using the nether method because these two parameters that I just described, of course, not exact because the experimental data is not exact. So I have to, fit my two parameters in a 2D plane to, to get the optimal results for the best uh, fit of my function. And this is how it looks like. So if I am looking at the number of mutagen damage, then I can see that without this optimization, if I increase the dose, the mutations increase linearly. That's 
what we expect. But uh, if I use this kind of optimization, then I can see that this linear increase is actually decreased. And at the induced resistance part, it just changes shape to that one of the uh, case without optimization. So we have less with again damage. And we did this kind of comparison uh, with the IR model that I talked about in the beginning, that I'm saying that uh, both for my fits for the simulation, and if there was any kind of fit for the IR model in the articles that we took or the experimental data form, then we compared them according to the adjusted R squared. This is basically a value that describes how well a function fits to the data. And uh, on the left side, you can see uh, the blue dots are my simulations. They are just in decreasing orders. There are no any other uh, significance of the decrease. And the red dots represent the IR model results. So it can be seen that it's all over the place. It's, it's not like when we are getting a good results, then the IR model also gives a good result. But overall, if we took the difference between the two and just uh, showed that one, we can see that the IR model actually gives a really comparable result to our own, which is we are actually quite happy about it because the IR model describes the hypersensitivity region really well. So we get kind of the same results as that. Thank you for your attention. Thank you very much. Do we have some questions in the room or online? Uh, or I can start. Maybe do you, uh, if you compare it, do you see this also in all experimental data? Or is it variable based on cell type? Or is the dose always uh, the only, same? <laughs> we only collected experimental data where there was hyper radio sensitivity according to the paper that it was published in. Yeah. Thank you very much for your presentation. I think it's a very neat idea, but your model sort of assumes that cells are able to count not only how much damage they have themselves, but also how much damage the neighbors have. And how, how would that work? Uh, so it's actually kind of like a comparison that how much uh, damage they have inside the cells and how much is it in the environment just outside of the cell. So it's basically just balance. But do you have a, a hypothesis for how this is actually communicated in the tissue? So how, how do cells communicate to their neighbors how much damage they have? Well, we assume that there is some kind of chemical signal. We need some kind of signal for it. And basically the density of this signal is the one that we are looking for. Thanks. Any further questions? Okay, thank you so much.